Good morning students. I am sure you are now confident on chapter 1, food and health. You went through the entire video and you could answer most of the questions that we sent you yesterday. Today I have brought another video for your revision of chapter 7, skeletal system and the nervous system. All of you know both of these, the skeletal system and the nervous system are the organ systems present inside our body. As you know, an organ system is a system in which a group of organs work together to perform one particular task and this they are called and this forms an organ system. Inside a human body, we have eight major organ systems. In this chapter, we will be studying about two organ systems, the skeletal system and the nervous system. I will revise both of these systems one by one. Let's at first begin with the skeletal system. As you can see here, I have tried to simplify the concept of the skeletal system so that you are able to learn everything easily. You can also write it in the same way. You can also make notes in the, in the same way so that you can revise it more often. So let's begin. All of you know the skeletal system is the framework of bones throughout our, throughout our body. When a baby is born, it has 300 bones. But as the baby grows up, what happens? The smaller bones, some of the smaller bones, they fuse together to form one single bone. They merge with each other to form one single bone. And then at last when the baby turns into an adult, the adult has 206 bones. We have four different parts of the skeletal system. Skull, backbone, ribcage and limbs. You can see here, I have written 14 plus 8 plus 22. You can keep it in your mind, uh, mind like this. The skull is made up of 22 bones, out of which 14 bones are present in the face region, whereas 8 bones are present in the upper skull. And you know, the skeleton system provides protection to the internal organs. The delicate internal organs need protection against injuries. So these different parts of the skeletal system protects different delicate organs present inside our body. The skull protects the brain. Then we have backbone. Backbone is made up of 33 small butterfly shaped bones which are called vertebrae. The backbone is a long structure and it is made up of 33 small butterfly shaped bones which are called vertebrae. The backbone starts from the neck to the back of your body and the backbone protects the delicate spinal cord. We have the third part as the ribcage. As you can see the diagram in your book, the rib cage looks just like a cage and it protects the heart and lungs. The delicate organs that are protected by the rib cage are the heart and the lungs. This rib cage is made up of 12 pairs of curved bones. These bones are curved in shape and they are 12 in number and these curved bones are called ribs. At the back, these ribs are attached to the backbone whereas in the front they are attached to the breastbone. The last two pairs of this rib cage are only attached to the backbone but they are not attached to the breastbone at the front and so these two pairs which are only attached to the backbone are called floating ribs. And what parts are protected by the ribcage? Heart and lungs. Yes. Now we have the limbs. All of you know arms and legs are the limbs of our body. The arms 
are connected to our body through our shoulder bone and the arms are divided into two parts the upper arm and the lower arm as you can see I have written 1 plus 2 that means 1 represents the upper arm and the 2 represents the lower arm that means the upper arm is made up of one single bone and this one single bone is called humerus whereas the lower arm is made up of two bones and these two bones the upper arm and the lower arms are connected to each other through our elbow this is the elbow so this upper arm is connected to our lower arm with the elbow this upper arm is made up of one single bone sing long single bone which is called humerus and the lower arm is made up of two bones then in the same way the legs also are made up of two parts the upper leg and the lower leg this is the upper leg and below that is the lower leg the upper leg is also made up of one long single bone whereas the lower leg is made up of two bones the upper leg the bone of the upper leg is also called thigh bone and it is called femur and you must note it here femur is the longest bone present inside a human body when you have known femur is the longest bone present in the body you must also know the small the shortest bone present in our body is present in our ears and the name of that bone is stapes i have mentioned about it it is stapes the name of the shortest bone present in our body is the stapes i hope this has this is now clear to you when we move ahead we discussed about the different functions of the skeletal system we have basically three functions of the skeletal system one the skeletal system provides shape and support to the body Number two, it protects the internal organs. It protects the delicate internal organs. And number three, as I told you, the arms and legs, they are they have one long bones they have humerus and femur they have they are made up of long bones and these long bones are hollow from inside hollow from inside means there is nothing inside them they are not solid they are empty from inside but this part is filled with jelly like substance which is called bone marrow and the blood cells of our body are made in these bone marrow bone marrow of these long bones present in our arms and legs. So you can say, say the third important function of the skeletal system is to is the formation of blood cells in the long bones of arms and legs and where are these blood cells formed these blood cells are made in the bone marrow and this bone marrow is present in inside the long bones of the arms and legs so these are the functions of the skeletal system it gives shape and support to the body it protects the delicate internal organs and the blood cells of our body are made in the bone marrow which is present in the long bones of the arms and legs. After 
this we also discussed about joints we also discussed about joints now what is a joint all of you know our body inside our body we have the skeletal system and this skeletal system is a framework of bones from top to bottom we have bones and all these bones are connected to each other and that point where two or more bones are connected to each other are co is called a joint so joint is a point where two or more bones are connected to each other and these two bones are connected to each other with fibers and these fibers are called ligaments at a joint the bones are connected to each other so how will they attach how will they be attached to each other they will be attached to each other if they are tied to each other so they are tied with each other with the help of these fibers and these fibers are called the ligaments now we have two types of joints present in our body what are they number 1 fixed joint and the movable joint as the name suggests fixed joint means the joint which is fixed that means the joint which does not allow any movement which does not make any movement is called fixed joint whereas the joint which allows movement which makes the movement of the body possible is called a movable joint now where is this fixed joint present this fixed joint is all of you know the skull is made up of 22 bones and all these bones are connected to each other but they do not make any movement so such type of bones are called such type of joints are called fixed joint the the bones the bones present in the skull do not make any movement. movement do not allow any movement so these types of joints are called fixed joint only this part only the jaw bone can make any movement otherwise the whole skull does not at all allow any kind of movement then we have the movable movement movable joint inside a human body there are four types of movable joints number 1 hinge joint now what is a hinge joint hinge joint are like hinges of a door and they allow movement only in one direction the elbows the as you can see on page number 62 i would suggest you to revise all these four types of joints the hinge joint are present in our elbows knees fingers and toes and they can allow movement only in one direction then we have the pivot joint this type of joint allows movement in side allows movement sideways upward and downwards and they are that is why we are able to this type of joint is present in our neck and that is why we are able to move our head up down sideways and in the same way these are also present in our spine and that is why we are able to bend ourselves backward or downward and then we have the number third joint as gliding joint these joints are present between the bones in the wrist and ankle that is why we are able to 
glide our wrist and ankle they make it possible for us to bend our back twist and turn and that is why you are able to twist and turn and such joints are also present between the ribs and the breastbone the last joint the last movable joint is the ball and socket joint there are bones one end of one bone is shaped like a ball and the end of the other bone is like a socket and in this socket this the end the ball um, the end of the bone which has ball which is ball shaped gets fitted inside the this type of joint is present in the shoulder bone shoulder joint as you can see when you see the the shoulder bone is cup shaped inside this we have the the ball end of our hand fitted inside the socket of the shoulder and this is the same is with the hip joint so these are the different types of the movable joint the hinge joint pivot joint gliding joint and ball and socket joint with this we finish the revision of the skeletal system in the next video i'll revise the nervous